What we're going to be discussing today are experiments. In particular, the uncertainty in experiments. An experiment is actually not really worth doing unless we know the scope of uncertainty in our measurement device. For instance, if I wanted to measure the thickness of a single piece of paper using a standard centimeter ruler, this would not be particularly accurate because I'm expecting that the thickness would be less than a, meet, less than a millimeter with a millimeter being the smallest thing that I can measure with a ruler. So let's delve deeper into those uncertainties. There are two types of uncertainties and two types of errors. One of them is known as a random error. The other one is known as a systematic error. Let's have a look at random errors first. The number one feature of random errors is that they tend to be completely unpredictable. Often they only affect a few of the measurements, although they may affect all of them. An example of that may be timing. For instance, we may be trying to time the time period of oscillation of a rotating object using a stop clock and a few of our readings may be quite off due to a random measurement error. In other words, they are unpredictable. Systematic errors, though, are different. In systematic errors, the measurement differs from the true value by a set by a constant amount in each of those measurements. An example of that could be the zero error. For example, if I have a voltmeter that's been calibrated wrongly and is consistently off by one volt, that means that every single measurement that I take with that voltmeter will be off by that amount. Okay, folks, well, let's have a look at some question, question examples of random errors and systematic errors. So now let's have a look at our first example. So this is question 22 from OCR's 2016 AS paper, Breadth in Physics. So we've got a graph over here. A group of engineers are testing a new car and we've got a graph of u squared against the distance x on the x-axis. We've got quite a lot of information over here so the best course of action here for you guys would be to pause this video and attempt this question independently. Okay, now let's have a look at the solution. What the question is actually asking us is, so figure 22 shows that the straight line does not pass for the origin because of a systematic error in the measurements. The u squared values though are accurate. Suggest why a systematic error does not introduce any difference between the actual value and the experimental value of the deceleration of the car. Now, the first thing to do is just to imagine what would the graph look like if we did not have a systematic error. Now, all of those points are going to be shifted by exactly the same amount. So let's say that they were all just a little bit up. It won't be quite as accurate uh, doing this by hand. But just for illustration purposes, let me just show you. So let's say that this point over here is just going to move by two squares. So that's going to be here. And this one here will also move by a couple of squares. And this one here will also move by a couple of squares. And this one here will also move by a couple of squares. Well, if that's the case, we're going to have a graph which is going to have exactly the same gradient. In fact, it will be parallel to the one we have already. However, um, it will be just shifted in either direction. So it's going to look something along those lines. The question is asking us, why does a systematic error does not introduce any difference between the actual value and the experimental value? Well, if we look over here, the acceleration of the car is actually given by the gradient. Both the red line and also the given line have exactly the same gradient. So what we can say 
is that the gradient remains the same. So gradient does not change or the gradient remains the same. So let's just find that the gradient does not change. That means that the value of the acceleration is going to be the same. Just as an aside, why is the value of the acceleration the gradient? Well, if we just compare this with y equals mx plus c, we have u squared is equal to 2ax. I'm just going to write a plus 0. Let's write y is equal to mx plus c. If that's the case, we know that u squared is on the y-axis. We know that x is on, surprise, surprise, the x-axis. Our intercept should be zero, but the really important bit is the gradient. Now the gradient gives us the acceleration and that remains unchanged. Now let's have a look at another example. So this one here is question 20 from OCR's Exploring Physics paper from 2018. This is a um, question on the Planck on uh, Planck's constant experiment. However, we're just going to focus on one little part of it, which is part four on identifying the types of error shown by this figure 20.1 and what we can do to refine this experiment. And we're asked to identify two types of errors shown by the data. We know that those are going to be probably random errors and systematic errors. So that's the first thing that I'm going to write. So we're going to have some random errors. And we're also going to have some systematic errors. How do we know that we have both of these? Well, if we look more closely at the data, we can see that the data points are quite spread about the line of best fit. So we can just literally just write that. So the data points are spread. And let's be really, really accurate as well about the line of best fit the line of best fit. Okay, well, what about the systematic errors? We can see that the graph here does not go through the origin. So what we can write over here is that the, we know that we have a systematic error because the line does not pass through the origin when, when we would expect it to do so. We have almost answered this question, so we've definitely identified two types of errors. One is a random error, the other one is a systematic error. Now what can we do to improve this? One way of improving, in particular, the, uh, the random error, uh, errors is to take multiple readings of the voltage. And additionally, we also need to take the mean of those values. So to uh, improve our random error, we can, um, and systematic error in this case, actually, we can take multiple readings of V0 and calculate the mean. Finally, if you have done this experiment um, in a lab, you would have noticed that this is normally done in a dark room. Additionally, you can use a tube, normally it's, it's a dark tube, to look at that precise moment when the LED lights up. So uh, we can just write one of those 
shall we just say that we can uh, use a dart tube over the LED for viewing. Perfect, and this would give us the full marks. Remember guys, the question asked for two types of errors. We identified a random error, we identified a systematic error, and we also proposed a method of refining this experiment. 